Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary. Good morning, Emmanuel. Happy Sabbath. It is such a pleasure for us to be in the house of the Lord today. We are gathered here to worship our loving Savior, the one who died on the cross for us. And without him shedding his blood, we would not be able to have this privilege to come before him and to ask for his forgiveness. At this time, I would like to say welcome to everyone that is here, especially to our first time visitors. I'm looking at the back, there's a lady there tapping a baby, and I know this is her first time here. No, it's not? Okay, it's not your first time. Is it the second time? <laughs> so you have been coming. But there's a young man that is sitting beside Brother Wallace, and I'm going to take the mic down to him because I want him to introduce himself and tell us his name and where he is visiting from. Okay? You don't have to send it together. Happy Sabbath, Church. Happy Sabbath. Uh, my name is Daniel Palmer, and I'm not sure what I'm supposed to say. <laughs> but um, I'm, I'm originally from Jamaica, um, Niagara, St. James. I grew up in the uh, Elderzy Seventh-day Adventist Church. Uh, this is my first time being in church. I'm nervous. This is my first time being in church in seven years. Uh, <laughs> so, happy Sabbath, church. And in seven years, it has to be Emmanuel. Is that so it says a lot about us? And today, we also want to welcome for the first time as officially our members, those who got baptized last week. Brother John, welcome to the Emmanuel family. My sister over there, welcome to the Emmanuel family. I don't see that. Am I missing? I don't see him. Is he here? Okay, we just want to say, if you see him, please convey our welcome. We had a wonderful time here last week with the baptism. So we want to say welcome, and I hope that the other members of Emmanuel, as we welcome them, as we embrace them, let them also feel welcome. And I just want to say welcome back to my brother here, who is sitting over there. I want to say welcome. At this time, we are going to sing Smile a While and Give Your Face a Rest. And please make sure that we get up and we greet each other. Smile a while and give your face a rest. Smile a while and give your face a rest. Raise your hands to the one you love the best. Then shake hands with those nearby and greet them with a smile. Smile a while and give your face a rest. Raise your hands to the one you love the best. Shake 
Happy Sabbath, Emmanuel. You know, I just love the way you are smiling right now. Amen. Amen. You know, my brother, it's so good to hear you say after seven years, you came back. Seven, the number of completion. Amen, church. Amen. So, I look around and I see so many smiling faces. But I have a question for you guys. Do you love to laugh? Yes. You love to laugh? Yes. I love to laugh too. No. <laughs> so, who can laugh? Laugh, let me see. All right, there we go. Now, did you know that laughter enhances immunity? It improves sleep and it reduces stress hormones. And these are facts. These are not just made of stuff. These are facts. Laughing also helps you with shorter memory. Did you know that? No? Okay, so we're learning this morning. Did you also know that when we laugh for um, like between 10 to 15 minutes, it can burn up to 10 to 40 calories? Did you know that? These are facts. Did you know that? So, you know, for people like me, I mean, I need to start laughing like more often, right? <laughs> All right, you see, I got some people laughing already. So guess what? So with these facts, among others, I know that I definitely will be laughing some more. And there's no better way to do it. There is no better way to be laughing than on October 6th, 7.30 p.m. to 9 p.m., some of you may have known Dr. Dexter Thomas. He's the blind preacher that came and preached with us some time ago. Yo, some of you know him, right? So he's actually going to be doing a stand-up comedy. It's a Christian stand-up comedy. And it promises to be good. So you will be laughing, 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 and burning, burning, burning calories, right? Yeah. And strengthening the immunities, right? Yes. So when we come... On October 6, 7.30 to 9 p.m., we will be coming to make sure that our immunities are intact and our, our short-term memory, like some people, you just speak to them and you turn your back and you say, um, did you remember? And they say, did I speak to you? I mean, it will help to improve our memories, right? So, now you must be wondering, like, why should I even bother come and laugh myself to, to sponsor this event? So this event is actually is in aid of our pathfinders to go to Ashkash. As some of you know, it's going to cost like about roughly between eight hundred to a thousand dollars per pathfinder to go to Ashkash, Wisconsin next year. So we are working, working, working to make sure we get as much pathfinder as possible out. And not only is this event is in aid of the pathfinders. But you see this mic that I'm using? You see the screens that you're looking at? Guess what? Some of that money is also in aid of our technology department. Yes. We know that our technology department needs to upgrade. Upgrade, amen? Yes. We know that our technology department needs new equipment, amen? Yes, yes our computer systems, they need to upgrade. We need, we need to, you know, we need to be with the times, right? Yes, amen. So this event is actually in aid of our Pathfinder Ashkash Ministry and our AV department. So we need to come and support. So invite your friends, invite your family, invite your neighbor, your co-worker. Even dogs can laugh. You know that, right? As long as they buy a ticket. So just check the notice board and you will see the flyer and you can come. I have the tickets, so I'll be expecting everybody to come and take at least three to five tickets so you can sell to your neighbors, co-workers, just about anybody, everybody, okay? So we'll get that going, and we're looking forward to your support, and we're going to come and have a great time burning calories, right? Amen. I know I'm going to come and burn some calories somewhere, somehow. So with that said... I just want to let you guys know about another laughing event because we at Emmanuel, we love to laugh and laughing keep us looking young and fresh and nice, right? So on September 29th, this one is totally free. So you don't have to worry about I'm spending for this one and I'm spending for that one. This one is totally free. October 29th, 
September 29, rather, it's going to be a children talent show. Amen. Who loves to see their children do stuff? Oh, yeah. Who loves to see other people's children do stuff? Oh, yeah. Okay, so we want to see all the babies, the children, some, some of them they can play instruments, some of them they can say a poem, they can sing, they can dance. I know Joshua loves to say no. So even if that's all he's going to do, then that's his, that's his little talent for now, right? So that's, that's our talent show for the kids, so you can see Elder Sippy or Sister Smith for more details, and it's children ages 13 and under. So you can sign up for the talent show. So please see Sister Smith who did the welcome or LSCP and they will give you more information about our talent show. And I'm also going to direct you to please make sure you go to the church happenings in the bulletin. There's a lot of important announcements that you guys need to see. So for the sake of time, we're not going to go through them. But we also have a very important announcement from Sister Patrice. Okay, good morning, church. Good morning. Last week, the church business, at the church business meeting, the nominating committee was selected. Um, the majority of the church voted that the number for the committee should be seven plus two alternates. And at this time, so I'll read the names of the nominating committee. We have Patricia Roberts, Layton Service, Andrea Brooks, Sindel Lewis, Myrnal Smith, Noel Brown, Gillian Horn, Alternate Sonia Scott, and Steve Horn. Amen. 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 All in favor? Okay. I'll read them over again. Patricia Roberts, Layton Service, Andrea Brooks, Cinder Lewis, Myrnell Smith, Noel Brown, Gillian Horn, Alternate Sonia Scott, Steve Horn. Amen. Amen. I'd like to entertain a motion that these names be accepted for the nominating committee for 2019. Second. Any opposed? Aye. <laughs> okay, these names are now ineffective to proceed with the nominating committee. Amen. 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 Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. This Emmanuel Church is a busy church. Yeah. So much is happening, can hardly keep up. But praise the Lord, when God answers prayers, he answers prayers. So the church is busy working within these walls and outside the walls. So at business meeting, thank you so much to the clerk and assistant clerk for bringing us the nominees. And so before we go any further, um, let me just do it in order. We want to welcome everyone to church this morning, amen? Those online, I'm going to try my best to always remember to welcome you because I hear stories that you hear and you actually watch us. So I want to acknowledge you and I'm so happy that you're here with us today. And our own pastor might be actually having a chance to watch and Elder Richards because they're away today. They're at a leadership meeting at Andrews University in Barron Springs, Michigan. So they're away. So not only is the church busy here working, but we are working to educate ourselves to be even better used by God for his service. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. So our pastor and our elder Richards is, uh, is away right now. May God bless them as they go there to be equipped to come back to service even better than before. Amen? Amen. All righty. Then so much is happening, and I'm going to try to be brief here. Um, the, the next thing I just want to mention is, thank you so much, church family. Thank you so much for being there for one another. We have the chat that pastor started, and I believe it's a blessing. You know, and, and those of you who don't want to be on it, that's fine. Go ahead and take yourselves off, because I know how it is. My phone gets so full. But what I'm seeing happening is that people are touching people outside of the Sabbath hours. Church members are connecting. They're in people's lives above and beyond happy Sabbath. 
they're actually hearing and sensing and knowing what prayer is needed, encouraging words are sent out. I want to thank you so much. And even as I say that, we're thinking of some of our bereaved families who, that, that have sent messages out and texts out that the church family has supported through that chat. Last week was wonderful, wasn't it? Amen. Deacon and Deaconess Day. Now you have to go to the website because the pictures have been put up there, right, Sister Alicia? And you saw those peach cream ties, peachish orange that they had up here. It looks beautiful, beautiful. We have a website, church, Amen. that the AV department, the Brother Daniels has put up there. We want to get on there and go and see what's going on in our church. God is using Emmanuel and he's answering prayers. So last week, the, you did something wonderful for me last week. I don't even know how to say it. And that's why I wanted to talk about the smile. Because they told me, you didn't smile, Sister Brooks. But that was a shock I was in. But then I know, you know, that God is so good to me. And really and truly, it was not expected. And church, I really do appreciate that. The love, the outpouring. And I, I know it's there. But for you to take the time to tangibly recognize me, you know, God is... God is worthy of all the praise, and I thank him for placing me here among people like you. Thank you so very, very much. Wonderful Deacon and Deaconess Day. As a matter of fact, I was in, um, and I, and I know time is going, but it's important to affirm, very important. I was tell, sharing last night after the prayer for the nominating committee names, even though we didn't know the names yet, we prayed out here. We got together and prayed after fasting from Thursday evening to Friday evening sunset. This church is working, and we're doing it through prayer. Yes. And so God is strengthening. But somebody, I was in Walmart trying to pick up some last-minute things for our church, for Deacon and Deaconess Day, for, for the food. And I went in there, and there was another sister from another church there, and she's told me that she had come out to our Family Life program. And then she's, I said, well, we're having Deacon Deaconess Day tomorrow. And she said, wow, I am so happy to see all these special days happening at Emmanuel. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord is shining his light, and we are going to, by his grace, continue to do his work. Yes. October 13th, so we talked about the 6th for the laughter. So October 13th, we're going to have the Adventist um, um, University of Health Sciences doing the entire day. Another special day. ADU will be here. The Sabbath is called Secure in Christ. Secure in Christ. And they're going to have it from Sabbath school all the way through AYS. It's going to be a full day. You don't want to miss it. And bring some people along. It's secure in Christ. They've been calling me about the audiovisuals. They've been calling me. They're bringing a choir. They said we had to expect 45 people plus, wow. which is staff, students, and choir. Amen. So let us come prepared that Sabbath to be not only host, but to be ministered to as a church family. Okay? Amen. All right. On October 26th 20, to 28th, read your bulletins. Married couples, I haven't forgotten about the retreat. We have just been busy, and I haven't had time to promote it. But married couples, please, remember we had it last year, and I'm praying that the Lord will use this year again to strengthen and encourage uh, marriages. All right? And the last thing before we go on to talk about the nominating process is that on September 22nd, AYS has been gracious. Because we're in this nominating season right here, we think it's important that people get a, an opportunity to find out what their special gifts are, to understand and begin to think. Before the nominating committee calls me, what do I think that God is calling me to do? Where do you think I'm, God has gifted me or talented me so I can be used in his service? So September 22nd will be a special AYS where we're going to be able to learn about our special gifts and we're going to be able to do an assessment to find out what our gifts are so we can be prepared prayerfully to be able to speak and to answer, here I am, Lord, when the, when the nominating committee calls. Amen? Amen? So do not forget that. God bless. Happy Sabbath again, Emmanuel. Happy Sabbath. It's our praise and worship time, so we're going to start with hymn 212. It's almost time for the Lord to come. Him two twelve.
on the rising tide, it will never fail, while our hopes abide within the veil. We have an anchor that keeps the soul, steadfast and sure on the billows roll, fast to the rock which cannot Seeking the Lost, hymn 373. Please stand.
call to worship and affirm our faith. Come all ye who thirsty, come to the water, and ye who have no money, come buy and eat without money, I'm sorry, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread? Give ear, everyone, give, give ear, ear to come to me, listen to me, listen to me, I will make a covenant with you, my friend of love, Mr. David. David. Amen. Exodus 20, Remember the so, Sabbath, keep it holy, six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day, the Sabbath of the Lord thy God, in it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, not a son, not a daughter, not a dean servant, not a maid servant, not a cattle, not a stranger within thy gate. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested on the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. For God's world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not in Son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. And now we will sing Sabbath rest. Church. 
Today's scripture will be taken from John 13, verse 1 to 5, and we'll be reading responsibly. John 13, 1 to 5. It says, Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus went, Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. Jesus, knowing that the Father had give, given all things into his hand, and that he was come from God and went to God. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was graded. Here is the reading of God's word. You may be seated. the Lord this morning it's time for prayer God has already been here with us but now it's a special time where we can commune with him in prayer where our voices can be heard as we lift up corporate prayer to the Lord this morning anyone who for any reason feels and has a desire to come close to the altar please feel free to do so those of us who want to remain where we are to the best of our ability, let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Father, our God, our Creator, our Redeemer, our Friend, our Comforter, our Surety. Father, we bless your name this morning. We want to thank you, God, for allowing us to be here. We want to thank you for your provisions for us during the week. We want to glorify your name for helping us even when we didn't know we needed keeping dear father we want to thank you for your angels that protected us on the highways or the byways in school father we know that by ourselves father we would not have made it here this morning but it's by your grace and your love that we are able to come into your sanctuary with thanksgiving and with praise we magnify you for how you're working in our lives us. Father, we yield to you this morning, thanking you for the privilege of bowing in your presence. Father, we have families here that are grieving, families hurting, that have lost loved ones. Father, some unexpectedly, some maybe they were ill, but Father, none of us can really re realize the depth that death has upon us. So, Father, you didn't intend for death to come. So many of us are laying people to rest, even now, Sister Marshana, it's a funeral of her grandfather. Lord, I just pray right now that you'll be by their side. Each and every member in here, Father, that's hurting. Father, it may not be through the death of someone. It could be hurting because of finances. They could be hurting because they're in relationships that are abusive. They could be hurting, Father, because they're in jobs, their Father, that brings sorrow that they're struggling in because the enemy will find any way to hurt your people. But, Father, we know that we will not give up because we are holding on to you. And, Father, those of us who are hurting to the point that we cannot even hold on, we know you are not letting us go, and we rest in that. Father, we ask that you'll remember each and every person in a special way. We want to lift up the names of those that were called for the nominating committee process. Father, we are wanting to do your will. We don't want to do anything outside of your will. Nothing outside of you will prosper. 
But anything that you put up, Father, then nothing can take it down. So we are glad and we just proclaim your goodness and your grace. And we ask that you'll be with us all as a church family. Father, those... Not a preacher, but sometimes I feel like jumping. Yeah. I feel like jumping sometimes, you know, yeah. because truly, without God, we are nothing, yeah. nothing whatsoever. He can roll back our stone yeah. and call out our name, yeah. and we come and walking right out of that grave. Thank God. Amen. Thank God. Brothers and sisters, I have my um, stuff right here. But I just want to tell you something. Back there, the easy, both ways, making my head feel cold. <laughs> so you can operate. You know, there's something called operating temperature. Yeah, I'm a mechanic. I work on cars. Yeah, the car must warm up before it operates properly. And you as well as a body temperature. If that body temperature drops, we in trouble. So I'm going. I'm, I'm going back up. So pray for me, brothers and sisters. Pray for me. Um, I want to give you a little joke. Just before I start, my grandson, Stephen. I think he's here somewhere. Yeah. Um, just the other day, he said to his mom. But just before I say that, you know, our pastor is trying to introduce, well, let's say, um, get more young people involved in, in church, to do things at church. So we want to grow young. And if you should remember, back in, in the day when the sanctuary was on earth, and they had the, 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 the tenth sanctuary, the youngest started from 20 years up to f about 40 years old to minister in the sanctuary. The only oldest person was there was the high priest, which is Aaron. And the Moses was the man who leads Israel out. So you see, I'm 58 years old. So now to the story. My grandson said to his mom, um, Mom, um, Grandpa is getting old, so somebody have to take over because I think I want to go and study ministry, pastor. Because he's the pastor of the church, but he's getting old. <laughs> so his mom said, no, grandpa is not the pastor. He, he's an elder there. So who is the pastor? Um, pastor Claude, Claude Hustle. Oh, you mean Claude? Said, yes. So you see, he see that I'm getting older, and he want to take over. So, so let's encourage our young people. Amen? Amen? Let's encourage our young people. Can't see you well without. If I took my take my glasses off, I, I could see you well. But without the glass, if I have these glasses on, I can't see you well down there. I only could read. Now I want to thank him, sister, sister, Lewis. I don't know how you could sing when you have just. Where did you get the strength to sing when you have just lost a loved one? It's not easy. I bless your name, Lord. I bless your name. And um, Sister Terika, Tashika, sorry to call your name wrong, Tash, Tashika Wilson. You know, sometimes I'm going to ask her to sing for me, and then she said she was, won't be at church. But for some reason, I don't know. I don't know if she saw my name in the bulletin or what, or somebody told her, but she sung this morning. That was great as well. I want to thank her. And those online, I want to reach out to you. May the God who we serve bless your heart today as you listen. I'm going to talk to the musician, um, the young man who is, yeah, 
right there, and I'm Sister Anika as well. And all of you who are here who came today just to give God praise and thanks for everything that he has done for us. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for everything that you have done for us so far. God, we know and realize without you, we are nothing. In our walk with you, Lord, you are there. In our crying, you are there. Because you said you will never leave us nor forsake us. And even now, as even as a loved one moan, loss of loved ones who have gone on before us, dear Father, we know we're not mourning without hope, dear Father. But we know in that day when you shall call us forth, we shall be reunited again in your kingdom, Father. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. As I said before, I'm not a preacher. I'm here to encourage us. Amen? I'm here to encourage us. This may sound to you like um, we're having communion, but it's not. Just listen to the words. Because it's hard to, to live a life, a Christian life, without forgiving others. It's very hard. If you don't give people who wrong you, you will not make it to God's kingdom. You have to forgive because God will not forgive you for your sins if you don't forgive others. Amen? Yep. It was before the Passover feast. Jesus knew that the time has come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. The Passover meal was being served, and the devil had already prompted Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them in the towel that was wrapped around him. And that's from the scripture that we read this morning, John 13, 1 to 5. Just imagine, of all the times we see Jesus bowing knees none is so precious as when he kneels before his disciples and wash their feet of all the time it has been a long day jerusalem is packed with passover guests most of whom clamor for a glimpse of jesus the spring sun is warm the streets are dry and the disciples are Ill, are a long way from home, a splash of cool water would be refreshing. And sometimes, you know, in that heat, you need something to cool you down. The disciples enter one by one and take their places around the table. On the wall hangs a towel, and on the floor sits a pitcher and a basin. Any one of the disciples could volunteer for the job but not one does, you see, because in ancient time, that was the custom. Let's look at um, Genesis 24, verse 29, verse 31, and verse 32. I was looking for more specific practice of this manner, but I come up to this one and just want to just show you a little of that Genesis 24 verse 29 but Daniel could you put that up for us please as well and it says here that um,
29, it says, And Rebekah had a brother, and his name was Laban. And Laban ran out unto the man and unto the well. And it came to pass, when he saw the earring and bracelets upon his sister's hand, and when he heard the words of Rebekah his sister, saying, Thus spake the man unto me, that he came unto the man, and behold, he stood by the camels at the well. And he said, Come in, thou bless of the Lord. Wherefore standest thou without? For I have prepared a host and room for the camels. 32. And the man came into the house, and he unguarded his camels and gave straw and providence for the camels and water to wash his feet and the men feet that were with him. So you see, back then, this was a custom to wash the, the, the people's feet. But as the disciples sit there, no one volunteered to, to take up the basin to take the pitcher and to even take the towel to do the honors. So see, in Jesus' day, the washing of feet was a task resolved not just for servants, but for the lowest of servants. And if you look at Luke 7, verse 36 to 47, we you see, see the same thing there again, but in a different, in a different light. Luke 7, Luke 7, 36 to 47. Let's read it together. 36. And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kiss his feet and anoint them with the ointment just pause a little moment you see the custom was to use water to wash someone's feet back then but here's a woman who is using her tears to wash the feet of jesus Now, when the Pharisees which had bidden him saw it, he spake within himself, saying, this, this man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that touched him, for she is a sinner. And sometimes we forget what we ourselves have done before we come to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he said, Master, say on. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most, and he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I enter into thine house. Thou givest me no water of my you givest me no water for my feet 
See that? Custom. But she had washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou givest me no kiss. But this woman, since the time I came in, had not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil, thou didst not anoint. But this woman had anointed my feet with ointment. And 47, wherefore I say unto thee, her sins which are many are forgiven. For she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. You see? Even though the custom was with water, Simon didn't even give the master some water to wash his feet. I even volunteered to even wash the master's feet. And the master has to point that out to him after in, her, in his heart was saying this woman is a sinner. If the master know he was if you know who is, who is touching him you see every circle has its picking order and the circle of household workers was no exception the servant at the bottom of the temple was expected to be the one on his knees with the towel and the basin but the master instead took the towel and the basin. In this case, the one with the towel and basin is the king of the universe, handshape man, nor wash away dirt. The hands that shape man, nor washed away dirt. Fingers that form mountains, no massages, toes. And the one before whom all nations will one day kneel, no kneels before his disciples. I was before his own death, Jesus' concern is singular. He wants his disciples to know how much he loves them more than removing doubt. Jesus is removing doubt. You see? Jesus knows what would happen to his hands at the crucifixion. Within 24 hours, they will be sparse and lifeless. Of all the times he'd expect him to ask for the disciples' attention, this would be one. But he didn't. You can be sure Jesus knows of these feet he is washing. Their 24 feet will not spend the next day following their master, defending his cause. These feet will dash for cover at the flash of a Roman sword. Only one pair of feet won't abandon him in the garden. One disciple won't desert at Gethsemane. Judas won't even make it that far. He will abandon Jesus that very night at the table. There is no Bible text that says Jesus washed all the disciples' feet except the feet of Judas. He washed all. What a passionate moment when Jesus silently lifts the feet of his betrayer and wash them in the basin. Within hours, the feet of Judas, cleansed by the kindness of the one he will betray, will stand in Caiaphas' court. Behold the gift Jesus gave his followers. He knows what these men are about to do. He knows they are about to perform the vilest act of their life. By morning, they will bury their heads in shame and look down at their feet in disgust. And when they do, he wants them to remember how his knees knelt before them and he, was, and he washed their feet. He wants them to realize those feet are still clean. Yes, 
when he touches you and washes you, you are clean, you are made clean. Look at John 13 and verse 7, what it says. Jesus said to them, What I do, thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Remarkable. He forgave their sin before they even committed it. The offer mercy before they even saw it. Oh, I could never do that. You object. The heart is so deep. The wounds are so numerous. Just see the person causing me to scringe. Perhaps that's the problem. You see, when people around us and we come to church and we see them sitting in church, we scringe. And that's the problem. Perhaps you are seeing the wrong person. Remember the secret of being just like Jesus is fixing your eyes on him. Try shifting your glance away from the one who hurt you and setting your eyes on the one who has saved you. First John 1 verse 7. First John 1 and verse 7. Could someone read that for me please? First John 1 verse 7. Go ahead, read it. That's right. Let me read it again. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So you don't have to fear. All you need to do is forgive your brother or sister. Aside from geography and chronology, our story is the same as the disciples. We were, we were even in Jerusalem. And we weren't alive neither that night. But what Jesus did for them, he has done for us. He has cleansed us. He has cleansed our hearts from sin. Even more, he is still cleansing us. John tells us we are being cleansed from every sin by the blood of Jesus. In other words, we are always being cleansed. The cleansing is not a promise for the future, but it is a reality in the present. Because every time you ask for forgiveness, he is cleansing. He is cleansing. And if you don't think that he's cleansing you every time you ask for forgiveness, well, when you pray, don't ask and see what happens. You, you always have to ask because you don't know. Sometimes we do things that we're not even sure about and it might not be well with the Lord. So you always have to ask for forgiveness. Our Savior kneels and gazes upon the darkest acts of our lives. But rather than recoil in horror, he reaches out in kindness and says, I can clean that if you want. And from the basin of his grace, he scoops up a palm full of mercy and washes our sins away. Yes. But that's not all he does because he lives in us. You and I can do the same. When we meet people on our way, we can do the very same thing that Jesus has done for us. Because he lives in us. You and I can do the same. Because he has forgiven us, we can forgive others. Because he has forgive because he has a he has a forgiving heart. We can have the same heart as well. We can have a heart like 
Jesus. And look at John 14. No, John 13, verse 14 to 15. It says here, John 14, verse 14 to 15. It says, If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, he also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that he should do as I have done to you. See? So he has set the example. You don't just wash someone's feet because you love them. Or because your, your neighbor or friend. You should wash their feet because you have the same heart as Jesus has. See, Jesus washed our feet for two reasons. The first, to give us mercy. The second, to give us a message. And that message is simply this. Unconditional grace. We are to offer unconditional grace as well. I know it's not easy when someone hurts you. I've been through that before in my early work in Christ. When I was living in New York, people did me things and I mean, I go to church, I saw them sitting in church and, and I can't function. I'm there, I gotta make it right. And from I make it right, I swear I will never come to church again without speaking to anybody at church. You can't. It's kind of a hard to do that. The mercy of Christ preceded our mistakes. Our mercy must precede the mistake of others as well. See? We got to think like, like Christ. In the scripture, say, let this mind be like. Amen. Those in the circle of Christ had no doubt about his love. Those in our circle should have no doubt about ours. You see. So, how, how do you love others? Huh? How do you love them when they have done you such wrong? You have to love them like Christ loved them. What does it mean to have a heart like this? It means to kneel as Jesus knelt, touching the grimy parts of the people. Huh. Touching the grimy parts of the people who we are stuck with and washing away their unkindness with kindness. That's how you do it. But you might say, Elohan, you are saying we haven't done anything wrong. I'm not the one who treated. I'm not the one who lied. I'm not the guilty party here. Perhaps you are you aren't. But neither was Jesus. You see that? Jesus hasn't done anything wrong. We are the one who has done things wrong. But yet he get down on his knees and wash the disciples' feet. Of all the men in that room, only one was worthy. Of having his feet washed. And that was Jesus. And he was the one who washed the feet. The one worthy of being served. Serve others. The genius of Jesus' example is that the burden of bridge building falls on the strong one. Not on the weak one. The one who is innocent is the one who makes the gesture. You see? Always is the one who say, okay, well, I haven't really done anything, but let me, let, let me just go and talk to her. Let me just go and talk to him. Let me just make things right. You know, I don't want the argument tonight. I don't want, you know, I just leave it alone. Always the one who is innocent try to make 
wrongs right. And you know what happens? More often than not, if the one in the right volunteers to wash the feet of the one in the wrong, both parties get on their knees. Don't we all think we are right? Hence, we wash each other feet. So if you think you're right and I think I'm right, well, let's wash one of the feet. And it's all, all end there. But the point is, if both of us at war with each other, then we can't wash each other feet. Please understand, relationship doesn't strive because the guilty are punished, but because the innocent are merciful. The innocent are merciful, always. And no other one who is innocent like Jesus. None of us is innocent. But we practice from what he has taught us. You see? I never kept you all long. So as I conclude, the power of forgiveness. A true story. A husband and wife tell about a storm they were weathering. Through a series of events, she learned of an act of infidelity, and that had occurred more than a decade ago. Think about that, for more than 12 years. He had made the mistake of thinking it would be better not to tell her. So he didn't. But she found out, and as you can imagine, she was deeply hurt. Through the advice of a counselor, the couple dropped everything and went away for several days. A decision had to be made. Would they flee, fight, or forgive? So they prayed. They talk, they walk, they reflect. In this case, the wife was clearly right. Woman, what do you say? Amen. She could have left the, you know, women have done that for lesser reasons. Or she could have stayed and made his life a living hell. Other women have done that as well. But she chose a different response. On the tenth night of their trip, he found a card on his pillow. On the card was a printed verse. I rather do nothing with you than something without you. Beneath the verse, she wrote, Beneath the verse, she had written these words that I just read. And also she wrote this, I forgive you, I love you, let's move on. See that? Instead of fighting. The card might as well have been a basin, and the pen might as well have been a pitcher of water. For out of it, pour mercy, and with it, she washed her husband's feet. Is any relationship in your world thirsty for mercy? Is any relationship in your world thirsty for mercy? That's the question. It doesn't matter if you are right. It doesn't matter if other people would do it differently. It doesn't matter if you have the right to walk away. Whose feet do you need to wash? question for all of us. Whose feet do we need to wash? It's not an easy thing. And when you don't wash others' feet and talk about it, you know what I mean. Don't go and say, okay, her feet wasn't smelling good. 
his feet wasn't smelling good. Do you think Jesus told his disciples that when he washed their feet? In those days, the streets that they walked was dusty. Dirt. Like sand. They walk daily everywhere they go. They didn't have on socks and shoes. They were bare feet men. So could imagine. And we just have a basin with water and we just wash, I would say, clean feet. Because think about Jesus washing the disciples' feet. It will take him at least maybe five minutes or more just to clean each because it's all dirty. So if there's someone in your circle and you need to wash their feet and ask for forgiveness, the next time we have communion, do so. Uh, even before that time comes, do that as well. So come, let's serve like Jesus. And wash each other feet and forgive them for what they have done us. Amen? Amen. 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 May God bless you. Amen. Amen. The sermon's title today was The Innocent Are Merciful. Amen. The Innocent Are Merciful. I want to thank the elder so much for allowing God to use him today. He told us that we need to think like Jesus. He told us that we need to have the heart of Jesus. And he says it's when we're innocent, when we have done no wrong, that we're to reach out and touch and wash the feet of those that feel that we have wronged them. And before I read the benediction this morning, please remember those who would like help or want to turn back, stay behind to work on their ministry um, evaluation or their ministry interest please feel free to do so the elders and I will be here to assist those who need assistance I'll be reading from 2nd Corinthians 13 and I'll be reading verses 11 and 14 it says finally brethren farewell be perfect be of good comfort be of one mind live in peace and the God of love and peace shall be with you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.